All right, and so this is the Bamboo Lab A1 combo. Very excited about this printer. This is the box it comes in. We can see here a little picture of what the printer and the multi-material system that comes with this printer. So the box is not too large and not too heavy at 33 pounds on the shipping label. Let's go ahead and open it up. And so the way Bamboo Lab does it is you have two sides of this plastic bag that's taped to the box itself. And there's little pictures on the side to grab the bag and lift everything out. And this technically what comes out. So as you guys can see, everything is very well packed. On the top we got a little air cushions. Here we have our build plate with the quick start guide. So on the top layer, we have quite a bit going on. And it appears to be a lot of the multi-material parts in the stand. The spool holders, and these look really cool. And there are four of them. A little toolkit for the A1. And also a little project that comes with this printer that you can do where it has the hardware that's needed to build what's here on the picture. It looks like an engine. So that's it for the top layer. All right, so our next layer down also looks quite interesting because we have the main center here for the multi-material. Brackets, holders, the little clean-out station. So this is going to be our main assembly holder for all of the spools. So the holders will go on here. And then these are all of our little extruders, detectors for the four different filaments. And we do have a little plug here that comes out that plugs into the printer. And here we have some kind of bracket that looks like a filament guide maybe, and it clips on. And then it looks like this piece here maybe connects over here. Okay, so this I think is just the spool holder, which makes sense because, you know, if you're just going to use the A1 without the multi-material system, this is where you'd put your spool, and this is kind of like a guide for the filament so it doesn't get tangled. Very nice. We got this little contraption and this is pretty cool because this is where the nozzle comes in, purges, and then there's a mechanism here that moves the purge out. The extra filament flies out to the side. So, And then we have our power cord, which we have the US type, three and a half, four feet. All right, and so that's this layer. So the next layer down, we can kind of see we're getting to the printer itself. So we have the gantry, which is the upper part here, and then we got the base on the bottom. Again, very well packed. So there's little paddings everywhere, zip ties, tape holding things together. And so on the very bottom, we have our base nestled in this foam. Let's go ahead and get all this packing material out of the way. So we have all of our tubing for the multi-material system. We can get a very small sample of coiled white PLA. And here we have the base and it looks like this is the front. And check this thing out guys, it has a little screen that swivels. Pretty cool. Everything looks really nice. All right, so let's see what the manual says. We do get some more stuff in here, safety guidelines. This one's for the 3D printer. This one's for the AMS light. And then we got the warranty card. So this is what our manual looks like. It's a kind of a small booklet, but very nicely presented. Everything that's included, everything inside the accessory box. Here shows us how to install the bill plate and then putting the printer together. Yeah, I guess we need to go ahead and see what we have in here. And it appears that it's everything that we need to put the printer together. So there's a little baggie here. It says for the base, more baggies with labels. And you guys can kind of see what kind of tools we get. A few Allen wrenches here, another nozzle cleaner, a little rubbery thing. And that's actually here on the back of the bed. This looks like an extra one. We also get a little clean out needle and a couple of tubes. One of them is a lubricant oil and the other one is grease. And also there is a blade included, which is for the scraper that you print out and then put the blade together. And that's the baggie where it says for the scraper. And below that you guys can see we get a couple extra cutters and these are going to be the filament cutters here basically shears for the filament and then we've got this little spinny thing that probably goes somewhere yeah very nicely presented only thing is, is this is not like a carrying case or anything it's just a plastic holder which is still nice to have all right so let's go ahead and cut all these zip ties and you're going to need something to cut the ties with there are quite a few of them and again i really like the attention detail we got little plastic wraps around the aluminum plus foam pads everywhere and yeah again the attention to detail is quite incredible all right and now our looks like hot end is free. So in the manual here, it shows us that we need to take out some bolts to unlock the heated bed because this is not moving right now. So let's go ahead and flip it on its side. And there are little green circles and that's where the four bolts are that we need to take them out. So let's grab our wrench. 
and remove them. Kind of surprising that they're using four bolts to hold the bed. It seems like one or two maybe would have been enough. All right, that's all four. And now our bed should move back and forth. So this is gonna actually sit. You can kind of see here a T opening right on top of here. And here we have a little picture that kind of shows how it goes in on an angle and then down. And they also say to orientate the screen vertically or fold it in. And we probably should have done that before we unzipped everything according to the manual, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much, but you can do however you want. So yeah, simply the base will just sit right over here. Let's go ahead and fold the screen. And you're gonna go in kind of at an angle inside and then lay down. And it should line up and kind of fall down. And now it's all together. Actually quite simple. So if we go to the back and push our bed all the way to the front, we can see that there's a little cover here. And so this cover just pops off. There's a little nail tab here that you pull up and the whole cover slides out. And that exposes all of our mounting points that we need. Basically everything that's in the green circle is where a bolt will go in. And pushing the bed this way reveals a couple more here too. And here we have a picture of removing the cover and then showing us where all the bolts go in. The little circles, very simple. And then pushing it the other way for two more. And then we're going to reinstall the cover back on. So here we have a baggie that says for the base housing. And there are quite a few of them. And we're simply just going to install them everywhere where there's a green circle. So this is definitely going to take a little bit of time, but not too bad. Make sure you get them in there snugly, as it does have some resistance, but then when you go to the end, you can feel that it doesn't go more. So, so yeah, they made it very simple, where it's quite logical. Green circles means bolt, and the bolts are all the same. Actually, maybe you guys can see better here from the back. And while we're under here, you guys can see the kind of rails that the bed rolls on. Well, I guess it's one large rail. All right, so I put a bolt in every little green circle and we got three bolts left. So one is extra because the other two go on the front and we're gonna have to move the build plate to the very back. And you guys can maybe see here we have the two green circles. So yeah, pretty simple. And you know, this is gonna be the bulk of the assembly is just putting these bolts in. And while we're under here, we can see we got a pretty thick belt, much thicker than usual, and it is very nicely tightened, so we don't have to worry about that. So for the next part, we're gonna move the plate back to the very front, grab our cover, and install it back in. And it just clips on, and that's it. We are done with connecting the upper portion to the base. So for the next part, they want us to put the printer on the edge of the table like that so we can access the bottom to connect the bracket and all the cables. So we're literally just going to lay the printer on its back here with the front pointing up. Just like that and actually holds just fine. But yeah, here we can see how everything lined up. We do have a plug here taped that we'll need to plug in. And also the other plug here that comes from the upper portion that needs to be also clipped in. So you guys can see this little flap there. This is where this wire is gonna go through. There is also a USB type C that plugs in under here. And then there is also a little bolt that holds everything together right there. And so the way this thing is gonna go on is it's gonna literally go into these holes, the little tabs, and then we're gonna slide it up to plug in the USB type C. And then we're gonna run the wires and plug them all in. So yeah, if you guys can see that, we're literally just going in there. And when it falls in, then we can go up. And you guys can see the USB type C plugged in. Now we can go ahead and secure it with the bolt. So that's not going anywhere. Let's go ahead and run this plug here. I'm gonna feed it here through this groove and then around to this section here. And so they all have little stickers on them, color coded. So this is yellow, green, and white. And the plugs are color coded also. Again, they made it very simple. So let's just go ahead and plug everything in. So we've got the green there for the X motor, the white one for the camera. And then this one here that travels from the bottom is the X motor. That's the, I guess, orange, maybe not yellow. Here we can kind of adjust the length if we need to. Make sure everything is nice and tidy. So make sure you get your cable in the groove really well before you try to lock this little door in. So once everything's good, we can click it on and everything is secured. Pretty incredible how much detail and thought went through everything, even putting these cables on. All right, so that was easy enough. Now we can flip it back around. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna go to this side, specifically right here, and we're gonna install the purge wiper, which does have one bolt, and it's specific in its own bag, and this is the wiper. So with the metal part where it says keep clear, it's gonna go to the front like this, and it's literally going to slide in from the back. And there's a bolt that will go from the bottom up, just this one here. 
So yeah, pretty straightforward and not hard to install at all. All right, that should be good and it should be pretty solid. And so the way this works is when the head gets here, it moves a little slider here and then it purges. And it, when it moves away, it makes the purge fall out this way. Very clever design. It's all mechanical. There's nothing electronic about this part. So I like that a lot. And so that's actually our last step. The next part, it goes to the AMS. And I think I want to skip that for now. And we'll go straight to installing the spool holder on the top. Here we can kind of see how that will work. The spool holds on top and then goes down and goes into one of the AMS. It actually says here AMS feeds, meaning filament will go straight in there. So And so this is our spool holder. It's all plastic, but it feels pretty good. We do have a little clip here, some foam pads inside. And so it's going to just clip here on top. So we're just going to kind of center up this piece where the spool sits itself and then it just goes over the channel and then locks in the back and that's how it's held. So the spool will go here then the filament will fold to this little guide and then down into the hot end extruder which has this AMS here so we're just going to feed it through any of the four holes. Yeah simple as that we're pretty much done. So let's go ahead and install our PEI sheet, which is textured on both sides. Very nice. So you can use either side. And it does say here it's for PLA, ABS, and PTG. Flexible sheet. And we also need to remove this film. And then this just lines up to the back and magnetizes down. And that's pretty much everything. 